Hi, this is Mike Tarras with the Alaska Department of Fish and Game, and I'm here today to introduce a short video about how we count caribou. One of the most important aspects of wildlife management is knowing how many animals there are in a given area. This knowledge is fundamental to creating hunting regulations that ensure sustainable harvest and long-term conservation of a species. Figuring out how many animals are on the landscape is a difficult task, however, especially given the size and remoteness of Alaska. Each wildlife species offers its own challenges and requires a different method of estimating numbers. Caribou provide us with a unique counting opportunity. Each year in the summertime, if the weather conditions and insects cooperate, caribou form into large groups in open tundra and alpine areas. This provides biologists with an opportunity to take aerial photographs of these groups. In wildlife management, this is as close to a complete count or a census that's possible for any of our wildlife species. While this video may make it look like a simple task, make no mistakes, getting these images of caribou aggregations is a real challenge. It takes a lot of people, a lot of time, a lot of flying, a lot of waiting, and a lot of luck to pull off a photo census of just one of Alaska's more than 30 caribou herds. Come along for the next 10 minutes as we provide a glimpse of how we count caribou and give you a bird's eye view of a wildlife phenomena that few people ever get to see. Large herds of caribou migrating across vast landscapes are one of Alaska's greatest natural resources. These caribou are a key part of the ecosystem, foraging on plants and providing food for scavengers, predators, and humans alike. If nature cooperates, one time each year, a team of biologists with the Alaska Department of Fish and Game may get a chance to count these animals, furthering their efforts to conserve these herds. Every year, Thousands of hunters head out across Alaska to harvest caribou. These animals are an important source of food for many Alaskans. There are up to 1 million roaming the state in 32 different herds, some of which are made up of hundreds of thousands of animals. On average, approximately 22,000 are harvested annually, but because populations fluctuate naturally and rarely remain stable for long, biologists try to keep track of how many are in each herd. Doing so helps to ensure harvest by hunters is sustainable. With large numbers scattered across the vast landscape, counting them is a challenge. The animals are constantly on the move through some of the most remote places in Alaska. To count caribou, biologists must take aerial pictures of the herds. Timing is everything, and it's only during the hottest, buggiest time of Alaska's long summer days that all the pieces just might fall into place. When the temperatures rise and the insects become thick, caribou start to congregate in large numbers on alpine snowfields and windswept areas. They are trying to escape relentless attacks by swarms of mosquitoes, bots, and warble flies by squeezing tightly together so less of each animal is exposed. And while there might be more caribou for insects to choose from, each individual is less likely to be affected. Biologists are waiting for the perfect conditions to come together, high temperatures for several days, insects at their peak, and large, tight groups. The team must be ready to go at a moment's notice. This may be the only chance all summer to capture the necessary aerial photos of the caribou. They must act fast. The weather could change at any time, sending the herd scattering. When it looks as though all the pieces are falling into place, Pilots take to the air in small planes to scout out their locations and behavior. But it's not easy in Alaska's vast, remote areas. Radio telemetry is used to track and find collared animals. In almost every caribou population in Alaska, 
Biologists have fitted some with radio collars to help find groups from the air. These VHF or GPS collars emit a signal that allows pilots to find animals and gather valuable movement and population data throughout the year. When the caribou are in large groups during the summer, finding the collared animals usually means finding most of the herd. It may take multiple scouting missions over the course of several days or even weeks to decide when they're congregated enough for the next phase of counting, calling in the camera planes. Alaska Department of Fish and Game has two airplanes, equipped with three 100 megapixel cameras that operate simultaneously with a GPS unit to allow high resolution imagery and mapping. When the call comes in, one of the on-call camera planes heads to the congregating herd under the direction of the spotter planes. While the spotter planes are out radio tracking, they're also visually searching for groups along the way. The camera plane is directed to all the large groups, and smaller groups are captured using handheld cameras or simply counted directly by the crews in their spotter planes. So inside the aircraft, there's a lot going on when photography actually starts and prior to photography. Uh, once we get to a group and we're led to that group by the radio callers and the biologists that are tracking that particular group, the pilot flies a perimeter around that group of caribou and we're assessing if they're going to be photographable or not, how many uh, animals may be outside what we're going to be able to photograph in a single pass. We're trying to figure out if we need multiple transects for that group. And then once that perimeter is done, um, we start usually on an edge and we fly along and the pilot is keeping track when photography starts. He can see a flight display that shows the real-time photo footprints, so how wide a coverage we're getting and uh, whether or not we're capturing all those caribou or not. There's other observers inside the aircraft as well. They're checking for caribou outside the coverage of our photographs. Camera off, mount locked, uh, ended on 75-75. In the end, the goal is to photograph all the caribou in the herd as quickly as possible. Some may be missed, but most are photographed and eventually counted. While this is technically considered a minimum count, it is as close to a complete census as possible. Once the herd is photographed, it is then time to download the huge data files into the computer program. Based on GPS coordinates, the program precisely stitches all the overlapping images together and provides a seamless picture of the large groups. When the mapping portion is completed, trained staff reviews the digital images. This high-resolution imagery allows for the viewing of individuals on a computer screen and even distinguishing calves from adults. Biologists then mark every animal with a dot, signifying that it has been counted. Then computer software sums all the dots on the images for a total number. It sounds simple, but keep in mind, some Alaska caribou herds have 250,000 or even 400,000 animals. It takes a lot of time and a lot of work to accomplish the counting process. The system is not a perfect one, and the team knows they may miss animals who were not part of the aggregations that day. The census team then uses statistical methods to estimate how many caribou were possibly not captured by the cameras. Depending on the herd movements, proportion of radio collars found, and weather conditions, the number not photographed may vary between 1 to 25% of the total population. By using this combination of assessments to estimate the number of caribou not captured in photographs, the team is able to achieve an accurate total population estimate. The role of statistics in any wildlife abundance survey is really to get an, a, an idea of uncertainty. How close are we to the truth? And so in a photo census, we know that we're not counting every single animal. It's not a true census in, in that sense of the word. What it is, is probably the closest thing to counting every animal in a population in the caribou uh, example. But what statistics allows us to do is understand, for example, if the herd estimate was 100,000, is that 100,000 plus or minus 10,000? Or is it 100,000 plus or minus 50,000? And that's what statistics is doing, is letting you know whether you're in the plus or minus 10,000 realm or the plus or minus 50,000 realm. 
typically, uh, fish and game photo censuses are very high quality. This extensive annual effort is a collaboration between staff with the Alaska Department of Fish and Game and contracted pilots around the state. The goal is to photograph the larger herds about every two years. If the herd is going through a dramatic increase or an abrupt decline, the census may be attempted each year. In some years, the factors needed to complete a census of Alaska's herd may not come together, and a census cannot be completed. Knowing herd numbers and keeping track of population trends ensures that the Department of Fish and Game can manage, conserve, and maintain a harvest opportunity into the future, and trusting that herds of caribou will always have a place as one of Alaska's greatest natural resources.